Every time I posted any social media content that showed my desk, guess what question I always get asked about? And this goes for both woodworkers and non-woodworkers. And the questions are always, what keyboard is that? How do I like it? And what my setup is? So today I'm making this video to hopefully answer all of those questions and show you guys why I use this, this, and this every day for both my full-time engineering job and my content creation side hustle. And all three of these are made by IQNix, but I'm not being paid to make this video. I actually bought this one a year and a half ago after watching Ali Abdal's video. However, IQNix did send me these two a few months ago to try out. If you guys do decide to get one of these, I've dropped a link in the descriptions and you can use the code BEVLISH to get a 5% discount. But anyway, let's uh, start by talking about this keyboard since I've owned it the longest. Now this is F96 in the Coral C color scheme. And before getting this keyboard, I knew absolutely nothing about mechanical keyboards. So I'm not ashamed to say that I bought this purely due to its looks. But now that I've used this keyboard for like a year and a half, I've really come to appreciate the 96% layout, which means there are only 100 keys instead of the 104 keys on a full size ANSI keyboard. And then it's all compressed to a smaller size by removing all of those gaps between those keys. And honestly, Honestly, if you were to ask me which four keys were removed from this keyboard, I would not be able to tell you because everything that I use are still all here, including the number pad. So to me, this is a full-size keyboard in just a much, much smaller package, which is why I love this keyboard for my engineering job. Now, on the other hand, I almost never touch this area when I'm doing my content creation stuff, but I never really gave it much of a thought until IQNix asked me to check out their 80 series keyboards, which removes the number pad as well as a few of the navigation keys, leaving a total of 83 keys, similar to what you'll find on most laptops nowadays. Now, what really make these keyboards stand out is the design, which are clearly inspired by vintage computers and gaming systems. And these look absolutely amazing. Now, the top row of keys on the A80 are angled, which looks like those computers from the early 80s. And I think even the Atari 2600 had this sort of a look, which is a really unique design on a modern keyboard like this. Now, since I only use the escape print screen delete keys in this top row, it's really never bothered me. But if you use these F keys a lot, this might be something that you'll have to get used to. So if that's not your thing, take a look at the L80, which has a more conventional shape. And the best way for me to describe the design is that Atari and Nintendo got together and made a baby. Now that actually leads me to another thing I love about the design, and that's the color combinations. Now both of these keyboards have more neutral base colors. So I think these are a lot easier to match with the whole modern minimalist desk setups that everyone's looking for nowadays. But besides looking absolutely amazing, the main reason why I prefer these keyboards is to save space. Now I don't have a small desk, but when I'm on my MacBook, I'm always using the trackpad on the left to switch between apps and scrolling through the timeline when editing videos, while the right hand does all of the clicky things with the mouse. So having this shorter keyboard allows all three devices to be more centered in front of me and pushed closer together. It's just feels a lot more natural and comfortable. You'll really notice this difference after using the shorter keyboard for a while and then switch back to one with the number pad. Now, these keyboards are really well built. The case on the F96 is actually made out of aluminum, whereas the 80 series are made out of ABS. And all three feel equally rigid and heavy. In fact, they all weigh well over one kg and there's no flexing at all and they don't move at all when typing. And all three keyboards have PBT keycaps, so they're not gonna look all shiny and greasy after a couple months of use. I mean, just take a look at the F96 that I've used every single day for a year and a half. None of the letters have faded and there's no discoloration. These still look practically brand new. So I think if you get one of these keyboards, they're gonna last you a really long time. But Anyway, the only switch on these keyboards is the one that's hidden on the bottom for swapping between wired and wireless connections. And there's just a single port in the back for plugging in a USB-C cable for charging and connecting to the computer. But if you're like me and allergic to wires, all three of these keyboards can connect wirelessly to your devices and they're all compatible with both PC and Mac. Now what's really cool about the 80 series keyboards is that they came with additional keycaps for the Mac layout. So if you're a Mac user like me, you can easily swap those out. But I'm not sure 
if they're including those keycaps with the F96 now because I'm pretty sure when I bought mine, it didn't come with them and I really wish that they did. But anyway, the F96 can connect to three devices using Bluetooth. So I was able to use this one keyboard and swap them between my work laptop, the MacBook Pro, and my iPad pretty seamlessly. But with the 80 series though, they can only be connected wirelessly to two devices at the same time, one through Bluetooth and the other using the wireless receiver. That means if I wanted to use this keyboard with two different computers, one of those will need to have the receiver plugged in. I know that technically wireless receivers do provide a better connection with less lag, but you know, since I don't play any video games and I haven't really experienced any lag with these keyboards, I personally prefer just connecting them through Bluetooth only and not needing to take up one of my USB ports. Um, that's really my one and only complaint about these two keyboards. Now as for the typing experience, it all comes down to the switches under each keycap. So in the F96, I'm using Cherry MX Brown switches, which have a tactile bump along the travel that confirms when each key press is registered. I really like that kind of feedback while I'm typing, which is what I got these keyboards for. Now I tried a couple other switches in these other keyboards so I can compare them for you guys. So in the A80, I have the Gatoron Brown switches, which is really similar to the Cherry MX Browns. The main difference I noticed is that the Gatoron Browns had slightly less resistance, so they felt just a little bit more comfortable to type on for me. But that difference in feel is really subtle between these. You might not even feel it. However, what's more noticeable was in the sound. The Gatoron switches was just slightly louder, but that might be because the enclosure material is different between these keyboards. I don't know, but here's a quick sound comparison for you guys. The L80 has Gatoron red switches, which does not have that little bump along the key travel. So each key press feels considerably lighter compared to either of the brown switches. And because of this, I found myself more likely to press the wrong key, especially when I was typing fast. Also, I'm one of those people that like to press each key all the way to the base when I'm typing, which is why I definitely prefer the higher resistance in the brown switches. However, I did notice that the red switches sounded much quieter. So if you're someone who types lightly or just on a quieter typing experience, you definitely won't go wrong with the Gatoron Reds. Here's a sound comparison between all three. Yep, I did add RGBs to these. There are a bunch of different patterns and colors that you can customize on these keyboards. And there's really no functions to these other than just looking cool and draining the batteries much quicker. Oh, and speaking of batteries, all three keyboards come with 4,000 milliamp hour rechargeable batteries. And even though I've never done an actual test on how long these last, I've gone close to like two weeks without them dying on me. And that's with the RGBs turned on. So I think based on most people's regular work habits, battery life should not be a concern at all. Plus, all of my laptops, my iPad, my gimbals, all charge through USB-C, so there's always a cable nearby, which makes things really convenient. Okay, so all in all, I think that answers most of the questions I've been asked about these keyboards, and I definitely have no problem recommending these to you guys. I get that these are a little expensive, especially if you've never owned a mechanical keyboard before. I know I was a little hesitant when I bought my first one, but just seeing how good the build quality on all three of these are, with the inclusion of the PBT keycaps, I'm fairly confident that these will last a really, really long time. And if you're someone who spends a lot of time typing on the computer, there really isn't a more satisfying experience than what these can give you. So if you want to get one for yourself, go to the link in the descriptions and remember to use the code BEVLISH to save 5%. Other than that, just remember to like, comment, subscribe to show the YouTube algorithm what's up. I'll see you guys in the next video where I promise there'll be a little bit more woodworking.